Well, I promise we'll get to the very, very good part of something that nobody has seen in the hundreds of years this has been in human possession. It's right in front of them, and they couldn't see it. If it were only one thing, you would tell me, Oh, Kien, that's just simply your interpretation of things. But if the four facets of the Pyramidion of Ramos make one coherent, harmonic perfection of metaphysical story, then it becomes 100% undeniable. So I will get to that shortly. One thing I've railed on all these many years, both in Greek and Pali and ancient Egyptian, is the fact that all these translations are unreadable. Don't take my word for it. You don't download any copy of the Egyptian Book of the Dead or well, pretty much anything. and just nonsensical. I'm not going to translate the entire Pyramidian here. I'm going to translate uh, one section and give you a perfect example of that. And there have been many translations of this done. However, all Egyptologists, just like all academicians, <clears throat> usually come to consensus on things. There's no such thing as truth by consensus. And if anything is absolutely true and undeniable, there's no academician, is a metaphysician. Never the twain shall meet. Anyway, this is the Pyramidian of Ramos, uh, circa 1280 to 1220 BCE's New Kingdom, uh, 19th, uh, 19th Dynasty is the uh, first uh, section of uh, giving praise um, to the uh, you know, the Ureus, which is giving life to the east. And of course, we all know the sun rises in the east. And here's a typical translation. And this is actually, unfortunately, translated as eastern horizon, which is completely ridiculous. Anyway, the line on the eastern side of the Pyramidian reads, their translation, praising Ra when he rises from the eastern horizon of the sky. Well, that actually makes more sense in a lot of ancient Egyptian translations because it is, in English, it is sensible, even though it doesn't say anything. But that's not what this line of uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics actually says, what the actual passage is, and is logical and paints the correct metaphysical meaning of what the Pyramidian is saying. And you have to be a metaphysician to know what is being said, and I'll get to the very good part here very, very quickly. What the translation correctly should read is, and tell me which one you think sounds better. Now, one might sound better, it might not be accurate, though, but this is exactly what it says. It says, Veneration to Ra, bringing forth life from the chasm of eternity, from the celestial waters, life arises. Yeah, this is exactly what is shown on the Pyramidian of Ramos. Now, this is not the stellar part, and this is not why you tuned in to watch this video. So let me get to that now and show you the complete picture of um, everything that's seen here. Now, let's take a look. Now, there's four facets to the Pyramidian. One of the things that we all noticed at an early age about uh, pyramids, and I'm not talking about magic of pyramids or anything like that. If you look at any pyramid, especially if one side is lit and the other side is dark. However, this is basically evenly lit. On this pyramid, if you actually look at a pyramid edge on, where you can see two facets at any one time, what you'll notice is that your eyes, kind of like an optical illusion, will start to confuse you, and you'll actually not know, even though you know the pointy edge is pointing directly at your eyes. If you're looking at them edge on like this, at two facets uh, evenly, in other words, even distribution on your eyeballs, is that you can't tell whether uh, the edge is pointing at you or whether it's actually folded in on itself. There's this counterspatial notion in ancient, uh, and I don't care if you say nut, I don't say if you say counterspace, I don't care if you say zero-point energy, and I'm not going to start talking about field theory here. I'm actually going to get to the very, very good part soon, but I want to point out to you that this line between the pyramids, it looks like it's folded in upon itself as an optical illusion. And we're actually talking about the dividing line between life and death, uh, the manifestation of life uh, from the undercurrents, uh, the substratum underneath phenomena. Now yeah, let's get to the good part. Let's look at the Pyramidian top down. Now we know the orientation of this um, as it not only reads, but of course as it was found. It's like, well, some could have moved it and then passed 
plus plus millennium that it's been out there, but we knew how it was oriented. This is the eastern side, and you notice hands raised in praise and direction. You'll notice something else too important. Hands raised in which they're sent in praise on the west facing side. Now, it's true of all forms of uh, metaphysics, and especially the ancient Egyptians, that the east is considered, uh, you know, the rising of the sun, and usually metaphysically always is, of course, considered birth, you know, the start of life. This is the reason why, of course, they buried um, their dead in the Valley of the Kings, which is uh, west, and uh, west, of course, uh, represents uh, death. Now, the reason that... Uh, that uh, praise is given to uh, Raharakti, the uh, the uh, falcon-headed uh, deity, is that you'll notice three things here. Well, four things. I'm going to get to all the points that paint the whole picture here. Then I'll sew the entire picture up. There's four contact points. None of these people notice this, and I'll tell you what the metaphysical symbolism and what the actual story is. See, they kept looking at the hieroglyphs, and they kept looking. It's like, well, there's, there's the, uh, you know, there's the god of Raharakti, uh, the eagle form, and uh, you know, the praise being given to the southern Raharakti and the northern facing Raharakti, which is in a seated position and a standing position on the south side, and that's very, very important. It's like, well, yes, this is true, but. Why is there a crossover here? The divided line between life and death, um, fading away after death, where the soul re-enters Raharakti, i.e. the Absolute, before re-manifesting again. Why is it there is specifically four points where the forms and their extensions pass over the, the lines? You see these lines here? especially the Uraeus passes right over, right to the tip of the edge. The shoulder over here on the western side, representing death, old age and death, passes over that line. Wherever here, or the Ankh, which everybody, mostly accurately, they don't, most people think the Ankh only represents death. In the case of where it's being held by Raharakti in the seated position, means life is being taken back. And you know the saying, it says, we gave you life and we could take it away too. Well, this is extremely literal in the metaphysics, monistic metaphysics, really, of the ancient Egyptians. And this is accurate. So in this case, the Ankh is taking back life as it, of course, is wielded in the seating position of Raharakti. Excuse me, let me take a drink of water. Still recovering from the flu. Over here between the north and the east, we see the tail end of the Uraeus, which is wrapped around the solar sun. You know, of course, the sun is an orb. Interestingly enough, the human head is an orb. And we'll get to the shoulders here in a second. And there will be a very, very lucid picture of what is being said here. Anyway, the Uraeus is a representation of that which rises up, i.e. the individuation of the soul. The ancient Indians thought the same way that the snake represented, of course, quote, the footless one, i.e., you know, it had no physical body because snakes don't leave footprints because they don't have feet, obviously. Anyway, it's always been, through ancient Egyptian, ancient Indian, and Greek, a representation for the soul. Anyway, the, the uh, Uraeus passes over the divided line over here, and the shoulder here actually uh, crosses over. So we have these four connection points. We have east representing uh, birth and life, west representing old age and death, south the giving of life, because interestingly enough, and I'm sure you're well aware of this, and these, none of these Egyptologists have uh, seen this, which is kind of shocking and uh, startling. Yeah, let's take a look at the north, and let's take a look at the south, Raharakti here. So here's the south side, and here's the north side. Now, Raharakti is only facing to the west here and only facing um, to the east over here. Now, the Nile River, of course, comes from the south, i.e. the clean waters from the head source of the Niles. You notice what Raharakti uh, rising here is actually standing on a mountaintop. Now, if you look at these two forms down here, they say these are mountains, and this is true. But what they are is shoulders. If you could just pause for a second and shrug your shoulders, yeah, Shrug your shoulders is basically 
like the and when you get old you notice how people's heads kind of shrink into their shoulders you get bent over and old right so that's the setting sun People's necks shrinking as a uh, shrink. I said shrinking. Excuse me. <laughs> People's necks shrink as they uh, get uh, uh, get older. They get uh, maximum length sometime after puberty. You notice that uh, Raharakti is rising up. Okay, we have the mountains that Raharakti is standing on. He's rising up. The sun is rising up here at the top. You can actually see it of the Akat, representing two mountains and the sun, solar rock. That, of course, is the head. It's not mountains necessarily. Metaphysically, it's a reference to the shoulders, i.e. the body, rising up above and giving life. One thing is passing across this borderline here is the Urios, the soul, breathing soul into the body of life on the eastern side. Over here, we have it facing west. And here, the Ankh, which is not giving life anymore but taking life away, is facing west. Yes, and what you'll notice that Raharakti is in the seated position of an older person. This is how an older person wrapped up and seated in a position because older people are usually colder. You notice these wavy lines that the seated Raharakti is on on the north facing. The north is fixed, like the north star. There's a reason why this is the north facing pyramidion of Ramos. It's the fixed point. Now, this river, you'll think, well, it's the river Nile. Yes and no. Now, at death, the Nile dumps back into the sea. The ancient metaphor of all metaphysics, both Greek and Egyptian, is that at death, you return back to the sea. You know, individuation of the drop from the sea in the form of rain, and then a return of the raindrop back into the ocean. That's a story as ancient as time itself, really. The Raharakti is sitting in the middle of the Nile River here. But in the ancient pa uh, Pali, the word Padda, as in Dhammapada the Pali, you could say it's a path or a river, but what it means is a river of light. That river of light is a river of light seen by every ancient person that didn't suffer light pollution through ancient history, which is the Milky Way galaxy, the path of light. In other words, a return to the absolute. You notice the only thing that's rising up from the uh, river of light, in the case of the Nile River, but not literally the Nile River, but metaphorically and allegorically, yes, is the the ureus, the one thing that rises. This is the individuation, individuation from the larger to the smaller, or the infinite to the finite, and back from the finite to the infinite again. And let's go over here. Here you see it on both sides on the east, representing uh, life and birth, and the west side representing old age and death. We have the two mountains, i.e. the two shoulders, yeah, right here and right here. In the west, we actually see seated Raharakti taking life from the chet, the spinal column, i.e. the essence of the being, and returning it to the south side. So what we have here, not seen by any Egyptologist all these hundreds of years, they kept looking at the, oh, isn't that nice? There's Raharakti, and oh, uh, he's giving praise to Raharakti and worship of the sun. That's not what this says at all. You really think they went to all this trouble? And this thing used to be coated with gold. Most pyramidians were coated with gold. That's a known fact. I think it was mentioned by Pliny the Elder and some others that the pyramidians were covered in gold as capstones and great markers of uh, epic symbolism. And that's exactly what they are. Here we have the Milky Way. You can actually see a better representation of seated Raharakti taking back life. This is the west side, old age and death, where Raharakti is taking back life from the Ankh to the cosmic rivers, which is the Padda, the path of light. Same in ancient Egyptian as it is in ancient uh, India, which of course India didn't exist back then in ancient Pali. It's a reference to the Milky Way galaxy, that which rises up from the infinite to... Uh, um, um, to uh, the individuation of the soul. Let me let's see which image do I want to go to next. Yeah. So, the rising up of the wajit, the giving of life, because the shoulders are facing here in the case uh, the east, where life is being given, and right behind him over here, the shoulder is facing uh, Raharakti seated as the return. In other words, the complete cycle. So you have this cycle 
on the Peter Median, where the raw wajit is being given to the new birth and where it is being returned from the west side back to the north. The fixed position in the northern hemisphere, the north is always the fixed position. Not the east, not the west, not the south, neither of those are fixed position. Seated, uh, 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 seated Raharakti is, of course, necessitatively in the north. He's sitting in the middle of the Nile River, but not literally the Nile River, but the actual cosmic waters of, uh, of uh, the absolute. You could use whatever words that you like. So you have this perfect picture, and you have these four connection points here where the soul is being given again. Here is the soul is being returned. And here again, right back here, as you can see here, this shoulder of the uh, the uh, the venerating one is connected beyond the cross line um, to uh, the ureus and uh, ra of uh, seated raharakti, where everything renews again. So what this is is a cycle of renewal, and where these two are facing is the div divider line between life and death, the midpoint here, and the optical illusion that you see on any pyramid stone. It, it's a complete... And and now, all these words that I used to describe this over the past 14 minutes or so, I don't know if they confused you or not. I think I've made it very, very simple. But the a ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics were never a language, a lingua franca of the people. You know, your common Joes running around ancient Egypt, they were not. They were the language of the priest class. You actually had to know what was going on, and you didn't have to think this out and use words like I've been doing for 14 minutes. You looked at this, and it spoke to you in a completely different type of mindset, a metaphysical mindset, which didn't need words and concepts and conflagrations of uh, you know, words and definitions and connotations and denotations. You knew what it meant, and it is blatantly obvious what this says. <clears throat> I haven't interpreted one of these things, one of these facets, one way. You say, well, that's your interpretation. You know, it probably doesn't mean that. You know, the ancient Egyptian uh, academicians um, and Egyptologists have said it means this. Well, I've painted you a complete and total holistic, there's a neat word, holistic picture uh, that all of these things are in absolute agreement with one another. There is absolutely no way in hell you could tell me that uh, due to stupidity, that uh, these specific four points cross this uh, line on each facet of the pyramid accidentally. It's like, well, you know, they ran out of room here when they carved the onk, so they went over this divider line. No, 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 no. Absolutely not the case. Because they cross the line at four points specifically, which tell a specific story. And that shoulder... Yeah, the shoulder of the Akat, by the way, the symbol up here at the very top of this pyramidian facet on the south side, is the Akat, yeah, the solar sphere between the mountains. Well, shrug your shoulders, just for a second, once again, shrug your shoulders, yeah? That's your head between your shoulders. In other words, and they didn't think that the soul was in the head, but it's the closest thing to it, i.e. existential consciousness. And when these two things came separate, there's a reason why, too, when you look top down, that neither Ra Harakti is pointed towards the body. You notice the body is being is pointing towards the back of each Ra Harakti. In other words, the body is unimportant. Ancient Egyptian priests would look at this. They knew exactly what it meant. Ra Harakti is only facing the uh, the rising Uraeus where life is given, i.e. embodiment, i.e. a new soul, a new life, and Ra Harakti here is taking life back and pointing towards the praise of the devotee. But neither Ra Harakti is pointed towards the pointy shoulders, which represent either side of the Akat that sits between the solar uh, self. So... None of these Egyptologists have seen this. It is a lucent, clear picture of the metaphysics of ancient Egypt. That, by the way, is what the Akat actually means. It exists on many different levels, which is the one thing about true metaphysical symbolism that makes it fantastic, by the way. Um, when you see that, you say, well, the sun's setting on the right. Well, yeah, that's stupid. 
you don't build a great metaphysics about the sun setting on a horizon. And you can see, of course, it's rising up. There's a reason why this Raharakti is risen up. And the Uraeus is pointed towards the eastern side. It is rising up from the shoulders. In other words, the sun is rising. The sun rises in the east. Representation of life. Representation of new life. Raharakti arising. The head rising above the shoulders. When you get older, what happens? Well, your head shrinks into your shoulders. It descends. Yeah, the descending, setting sun. And this, of course, is why the northern, where we have it here, the northern Raharakti is in a seated position, facing west, facing the dying person of old age and death, and not giving life anymore, which the Ankh represents. People say, well, the Ankh represents life. It also represents taking life. Anyway, I hope I made this clear. When I look at all this stuff, I've been looking at ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics for over 20 years. It is lucidly, you know, incredibly lucid to me. It is blatantly obvious what it says. A lot of times you use the English jargon to communicate this to you like I've done in the past 15 plus minutes. It's somewhat more difficult, not really. Off the cuff, it's a little difficult, but not very. But I hope I painted the picture for you. So this is the lost secret of uh, the Pyramidia of Ramos. There is many, many, many such things like, I've, uh, like this I've seen over the decades. This was a really good one and a simple one because you had to stick a lot of important stuff on a four-faceted Pyramidian like this that tells a story. It's literally a, a metaphysical story in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics which takes advantage of geometry. And it communicates the geometry between east, north, uh, south, and west through what is passing over the divider lines between birth, the hidden realm in the south, the hidden realm in the north, which is fixed. Because we live east to west. Human beings live east to west. The gods, as the ancient sayings go in many different cultures, the gods live north to south, especially in the north, i.e. the Hyperborean, the fixed unmoving point in the north of the sky. We all know about that. Anyway, I hope I painted a clear picture of this. Thank you so much for watching. If uh, you want to contact me, my email is below. Any donations always warmly welcome. Thank you, and lux everitas.